Welcome back to my Pokemon Crystal Walkthrough. I'm your host, Diogen Z, and today, before heading on out the, to the west, like I said we might, we're gonna go down south to the bug catching contest because it's Thursday! And I always recall that being one of my favorite events. I would wait for it all week. I believe it happened twice a week or three times. I, not sure off the top of my head. It was either two or three times a week it would occur, and it was one of the greatest excitements in the National Park and in Pokemon Crystal for me as a kid. Always having the shot to win the valuable Sunstone, and at the time I didn't even know what it did, but I just wanted to gain first, and what? Our egg is hatching! Oh boy, what's it gonna be? <gasps> a Pichu! I suppose I didn't mention this, but when we passed the daycare center, I picked up an egg from the old lady and old guy in there, and they said to raise it well. So I've just been carrying it around in my party silently and waiting for it to hatch. I'm really glad that it hatched on camera, too. Woo! And going to the bug catching contest. Not a bad day, if I say so myself. But yes, always having the shot to win first amongst all the other NPCs. I always thought that when you talk to the NPCs in the game who are also... Well, actually, yeah. Yeah, who are also participating in the bug catching contest. I thought that, for some reason, it would mess them up. And they wouldn't find as good Pokemon. Yep, just a delusion I had back then. I no longer realize that now as working as a strategy. Because it's not! Something I do want to wonder, though, in question, is the ability to cut the grass in this game. Now, I know it's confirmed for this game, because this is really the only game I tried it in. But I don't know if you can do it in any other. Can you use the HM cut outside of battle to cut some of the grass down in other Pokemon games? And if so, does it change your encounter rate? And better yet, does it yield better Pokemon during the bug catching contest? I don't know. Comment below and let me know. It's pretty simple. We just have to go out into the national park and find the biggest and baddest bugs there are. Other than rising to the top and claiming victory, out of all the other NPCs in the game, something that the National Park Bug Catching Contest does well is fill your Pokedex. Normally, you would find all the Pokemon in National Park that you're seeing on the borders on the side, but in this episode, you gotta pay attention here, because special Pokemon appear. Pokemon like Caterpie, Metapod, Butterfree, Weedle, Kakuna, Beedrill, Paris, Venonat, Pinsir and Scyther all become available in the park and offer rare opportunities to mix up your average team or, just as I mentioned before, fill your Pokedex. And speaking of Pokedex, by the way, and other Pokemon related news, since we're just going to be going bug catching crazy all during this contest, before I do get onto this tangent, I will re recommend that when coming in here, don't go for a full powered Pokemon. I could have easily burned all these guys up with Cyndaquil and just gotten the experience points, but that's not we're here, what we're here to do today. We're going to try and win this contest, don't know what the results will be, but I recommend that you come in with a weak Pokemon, a uh, Pokemon that has resistance towards bugs, and one that has the insects resisting your moves. This way you don't overpower them and you don't knock them out. Anyway, on to the Pokemon Pokedex tangent. I recently saw some pictures for the 3DS version of a Pokedex, and I am pumped. Wow. Definitely going to talk about that during this week's livecast. But first, the insects. The small bugs it eats appear only at night. It sleeps in a hole in a tree until night falls. So it eats tiny bugs, but it's unknown if those tiny bugs are Pokemon. Maybe one day we'll find Pokemon eat other Pokemon. No, that'd be way too violent for them to make that kind of move. And by them, I mean Nintendo. After all, Pokemon faint. They don't die, except at uh, grave sites. They're dead there. But they do come back as Marowak spirits, so it's all good. 
something that's kind of an Easter egg, I suppose you could say. Oh, Butterfree! Let's try and catch this one. When trying to get the top Pokemon, rather than just going to fill your Pokedex, try to go for the ones that are higher level, more evolved, and more health, too. Whoa, that was quick. I was going to say more weight, but I don't think you can tell the weight just by looking at it, really. That Butterfree looked fat as hell. But man, that was almost too easy. Well, that's awesome. I don't have a Butterfree in my Pokedex, and we're definitely going to switch it for this Venonat. A pretty cool Easter egg here, something about cutting grass, is that if you cut right in that patch here, you'll make it shorter grass, like the grass into the south of the Pokeball. I don't know if you guys noticed that either. A very small Easter egg, and probably you noticed this right off the bat, especially by looking at the borders. But at the center of National Park, the grass is shaped as a Pokeball, and the center of the Pokeball is the fountain. It's pretty freaking awesome. I don't think I knew that as a kid, but I did discover that later on, and I was like, What the hell? It's kind of like a Clefairy shape being in Whitney's gym. I didn't know that the first time I ran through it, but now I have different perspectives on it. So this pincer, I'm just going to keep chucking Paul. Yeah, I was going to say keep chucking Pauls at them, which is Pokeballs. But we'll throw them Pauls and hopefully catch a pincer. Because I don't really want to do much damage to it. That Butterfree might be all, all that we need to win this contest. But the reason it's important to have it at a higher health is because for some reason it seems to go over well with the judges. They like to see Pokemon at full health and know that you didn't abuse them too much. These bugs wanted to be caught with a net maybe and not a Pokeball. Man, that pincer looks ferocious though. Ah, so ferocious it does not want to go in the ball. And look at that thing, it's just like slabs of anger. <laughs> the different cross segments of its body. Now I've said this before in previous episodes, but Crystal definitely, hands down, had my favorite sprites. But I want to know from you guys, what generation had your favorite sprites? And I don't want to know what's your favorite generation, as in Pokemon, but what generation did you think colored the sprites the best? I really love the colors and the vibrancy of this Crystal world, and the same goes for Gold and Silver. But the sprites in this game particularly just goes over very well with me. Who knows, maybe there was one that caught your attention. Like black and white, for example. The first time you saw a moving 2D Pokemon. Could be worth looking into. And especially if that's your first game. Again, Crystal's my first, so I've got a humongous bias towards this game. Uh, will you stay in? No. Yeah, see, at this point, if I can't catch Pinsir, I'll just let him off me. We've got ourselves a Butterfree, and that's all I think we'll need. But let's see what the results say! We will now judge the Pokémon you've caught. We have chosen the winners! It really doesn't take them that long to choose. Okay, third is Barry. Good. Second was alright. Maybe we're gonna get first. Uh, let's see who gets one. Who gets number one? Ah, come on! We caught a Butterfree too. What makes his so special? Uh, must have been at a higher level or something. All right, guys. Well, that was a fun jaunt in the National Park bug catching contest. I wanted to do that and cover it before we moved on in our normal Johto journey on to collect our other badges in this region. So in the next episode, we'll continue on with our main quest and keep seeing what Johto has to offer. I've been Dio Gen Z saying peace. Let me know how you like the new intro. Personally, it's my favorite.